The thin man usually heard over some of these stations will not be heard tonight. chasing her in a bathing suit. <laughs> she had on a green bathing suit. On the tenth green. She was very attractive, too. Well, got to be going. Goodbye, honey. Well, for Pete's sake, what's the idea of turning your head away? Oh, why, George, I don't know why I did that. I didn't know I was jealous over you. But for a minute, I forgot it was a dream. I, I felt just as if you had been chasing Mrs. Maxwell across the tenth green. Oh, oh, oh. Want to play golf this afternoon? What was only a dream for George turned out to be a nightmare for Liz. And then, of course, there was that tattooed leg. Author's Playhouse presents Isabel Scott Rorick's hilarious tale of Freudian frivolity, Bad Dream. <laughs> What's that? Blondie? I haven't seen it yet. Swap with you when I finish the front page. No. No, I was just thinking about the craziest dream I had last night. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Toast, dear. I was on the golf course in my bathing suit. Toast is ringing. I was on the tenth green. Take your toast out of the toaster and turn it off. Only it didn't look like the tenth green. You know how it is in dreams. George? Um, oh, okay, I'm getting... Uh, instead of the pool being up by the clubhouse, it was just off the 10th green. Why don't you ever turn the toaster off when you take your toast out? Uh, oh. And there I was in my bathing suit. The biggest bombing <laughs> raid over Berlin. <laughs> Chasing Laura Maxwell, of all people. Laura Maxwell? Uh, she had on a bathing suit, too. Green. One piece. And did you catch up with her? Uh, our dream's amazing. Do you know what I was trying to catch up for, Liz? I can't imagine. She had a picture of a fish tattooed on her leg. <laughs> and I wanted to ask her why. <laughs> uh, after that, we seemed to come to sort of a pool or a lake. It didn't look like the clubhouse pool. And she said that she'd like me to teach her to swim. Well, this is interesting. How long has this been going on? What? You and Mrs. Maxwell. Laura, to you. Honey, uh, this was in a dream. Well, it'd have to be. Nowhere else would a cow like Mrs. Maxwell ever dare come out in a one-piece bathing suit. Oh, she looked pretty darn good in it, as a matter of fact. How long have we been calling her Laura? Oh, Liz, honey, for Pete's sake, what is all this? I don't call her Laura. I don't even know her. <laughs> Except in a business way. Her husband's a Marine or something, and she's called up the bank a couple of times about his checks coming through, and she always says... This is Laura Maxwell speaking. Oh. <clears throat> well, I've got to be going. Goodbye, honey. Well, for Pete's sake, what's the idea of turning your head away? Oh, why, George, I, I don't know why I did that. I didn't know I was jealous over you. But for a minute, I forgot it was a dream. I, I felt just as if you had been chasing Mrs. Maxwell across the tenth green. Oh. <laughs> you want to play golf this afternoon? Uh, even Howie Sturm are going to play, maybe the Blakes. Oh, I don't know whether I have the nerve to show up on the golf course after last Saturday. Oh, all you need is a little practice. I'll pick you up around three. Well, all right. Uh, might be a little after three, as a matter of fact. All depends on whether I get stuck with old Mrs. Delancey. It's about time for her to drop around again about the condition of her checking account, and you know what that always means. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be ready whenever you get through. Okay. Bye, honey. Bye, dear. He did dream it, though. Yes, and by the look in his eye, I'd say he thoroughly enjoyed that dream. Oh, 
Hello, dear. Sorry I'm late. I picked up your clubs and told Harvey to go on in case we weren't here by 3.30. I had a hunch this was the day for Mrs. Delancey. Well, even Howie, you're here right enough. I can see their little Betty down by the pool. For Pete's sake, what's the matter with Eve leaving her with that Blake brat again? Well, why not? Well, didn't I tell you he pushed Betty into the pool yesterday? He did. Well, that kid's a monster. I don't know why Vivian doesn't put him in a padded cell. <laughs> Poor Vivian. I think she's done everything she can. Bobby just seems to have an excess of energy. You mean criminal impulses? <laughs> oh, there's Howie now, up at the clubhouse. Oh, Howie! We didn't expect you to wait for us. Why didn't you and Evie go on? Ah, no, there's no rush. We're waiting for the Blakes, too. They're in the clubhouse. Hi, oh. Eve! Hi! Say, what do you think? I got my hook, finally. Now I got a fly. <laughs> well, I'm glad I've got you for company. I get an awful inferiority complex being the only one in a sand trap <laughs> while everybody else waits for me. Say, you're certainly an optimist, Eve. Why's that? I see you've left Betty down by the pool with that Blake monster again. Oh, Corey Cartwright's keeping an eye on him. Oh, I didn't see Corey. He's down there with the kids. Is that so? Then who could this be coming out of the clubhouse? Oh, hi, Corey. Why, Corey Cartwright, you said you keep an eye on Bobby. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Your fair daughter is safe. Bobby and I had a man-to-man talk that appealed to his sense of chivalry. Mm -hmm. He gave me his word of honor to protect Betty with his life. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'd better not play. You go on, Howard. I'm going right back, Eve. Don't get excited. I just came up for cigarettes, and I promise you they're perfectly all right. Why, they were playing together like a couple of... (whistles) Who is that? Oh, that's our new member, Mrs. Maxwell. Hadn't you seen her before? Her husband's in the service, and she's supposed to be staying in town with an aunt. Can't understand how you, Mr. Corey. You're usually the first. Oh, give me time, Howard. Give me time. Oh, what a beautiful dish. Who are you talking about, me? (laughs) Oh, hello, Vivian. Corey's just caught his first glimpse of Mrs. Maxwell. He's still reeling. Oh. I wonder who that woman ever sees. She's always out here playing alone. Doesn't anybody know her? George does. Oh, Liz, for Pete's sake. Oh, do you, George? How come? Oh, oh, she banks with us. That's all I know about her. Why, George, he's so shy. Hmm? Tell Eve, dear, all about you and Mrs. Maxwell running around in your bathing suits out on the 10th green. What? Uh, She wants George to teach her to swim. Why, George, old man, what have you been up to? He says that she wears a green bathing suit, one piece, and... Simply gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, I'll bet she does it that. Hey, Corey, I thought you were supposed to be keeping an eye on the kid. And George says she has one particularly fascinating feature. She has a picture of a fish tattooed on her hip. Her knee. (laughs) Why, George, this is intriguing. Oh, Liz, now don't you think it's about time? (laughs) What's that? Oh, that's Betty. Come on. Oh, good Lord. Bobby's pushed her in again. Aren't you ready yet, Liz? You know how even how we are about starting a bridge game on time. As soon as I comb my hair, would have to happen right then. Hmm? That hyena pushing Betty Sturm into the pool. What do you mean? Well, I was just about to explain that it was a joke, that I was only ribbing about your crazy dream. Oh. What made you remember that? Oh, it's been worrying me. I left everyone under the impression that oh, you were Oh, they've here. already forgotten it. I had. Please hurry and fix your hair, dear. You know what? Funny how I happen to do that. Do what? What I was talking about. Telling that wild story about your dream. You know, somehow I couldn't resist it. Something goaded me. Hmm. Oh, I wish now I hadn't. I wouldn't want our friends to think Oh, you. our friends are broad-minded, Liz. Well, at least I'd want them to think you had better taste than that. Than what? Laura Maxwell. Who are we talking about? She's too tall, for one thing. Don't you think so? Hmm. I don't know. And she's given to snoods. What? Snoods. Those net things that hang down and catch up the ends of your hair. She's got on a different one every time I see her. You know what I mean. I've got one, only it's on the back of my little red hat. Oh. I wonder. Should I wear one? What? A hat. Sort of windy. Well, out. whatever you want. Come on, let's get going. I think I'll wear my little red one. <laughs> Liz, for heaven's sake, where have you been? Howie's simply flaunching. You know how he is, George, about starting bridge right on the dock. Don't look at me, Liz. What's combing our hair? <laughs> well, here, George, you hang up Liz's jacket like a duckling. Okay. And when you get your noses powdered, come on in. I'm in a sort of a flurry this evening. I've got to help Howie with the ice trays. In all the years we've been married, that man has never learned to get ice out of a tray. George, you see what I see. Hmm? Why do hangers always get tangled up in a closet? What's she doing here? Who? 
Who does it look like in that gilt snood? I can't see into the front room. I'm trying to hang up your doggone jacket. Who are you talking about? The tall, statuesque blonde in the green slacks and the gilt snood. What's the matter, Liz? Who's in green... Oh. Well, it's Laura Maxwell. Um, how did Eve happen to ask her? How would I know? Maybe we need the fifth for bridge. So you know that is funny, asking anybody else over on a bridge night? Maybe Eve was thinking only of your happiness. Oh, Liz, for Pete's sake. I knew something was going to come of that crazy story I started. Oh, there's your answer. Look who's in the kitchen with Howie. Now, don't you feel silly? Eve invited her for Corey. Oh, why invite either of them? We never had six people for bridge before. George, Liz, what's the matter? Come on, let's get started. George was having a little snood trouble. Oh, why, that's perfectly silly. George doesn't wear snoods, do mm. you, George? George should wear blinders. Mm, so I've heard. Uh, Liz, you're to play with Corey, Howie, and me. Come on, Liz, sit down. We're getting started half an hour late. Well, coming. A and George, mm -hmm. you and Laura can play gin rummy over at this little table by the fire. Oh. Hi, George. Hi, Howie. Oh, uh, Laura, dear, you know George Cougat, of course. Why, of course I do. How are you? Oh, uh, delighted, Miss Maxwell. Uh, you two don't mind if we put you off in a corner by yourselves, do you? How nice. Oh, uh, delighted. Oh, may I help you with that chair? Mm, you're sweet. For Pete's sake, let's play bridge. Come on, Liz. Delighted. <laughs> Toast, George. Mm hmm? Oh, oh, the toast. And turn it off for once. Uh, look, honey, what did you want me to do? Be rude to her? Be rude to who? Last night at, at Eve's. Oh, that. Well, I hadn't even thought about it. Well, then what's the matter with you this morning? I don't see what else I could do. Eve told me to play gin rummy with Laura Maxwell. Of course she did. I couldn't be rude, could I? There was no danger of that. You were simply dripping with old world charm. Oh, for Pete's sake. All I did was hold her chair for her to sit down. Uh, don't bother. I'll get it. Yeah. Hello? Oh, Vivian. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, no, we were up extra early. We've already had our breakfast. Uh. Oh, of course, dear. We're counting on it. Eight o'clock, right? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, where does she live? Oh, I... Yes, I, I guess he would, wouldn't he? Uh, well, of course, we'll be only too glad to. We'll be over at eight, then. Bye, dear. Uh, what was that? What was what? The dinner party. Vivian's been planning it for a month. It's, it's all set for eight o'clock, isn't it? With a slight exception. We're supposed to bring your Mrs. Maxwell. Uh, she isn't my Mrs. Maxwell, then. I'm using Vivian's words. So I thought if you were driving, you could pick up George's Mrs. Maxwell. Huh. Where does she live? That's what I asked Vivian. But she said, of course, George would know, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, I guess I'd better get an early start for the bank. Huh? I'll have to go by the clubhouse and find out my dream girl's address. Liz, you look simply ravishing tonight. Uh, Corey Cartwright's your dinner partner, and uh, you take Mrs. Maxwell, George. Yes, my beautiful. I was wondering where you were. Oh, hello, Corey. I uh, felt a little stuffy, so I thought I'd come out and see how Joe's vegetable garden's getting along. How could you feel stuffy? You didn't eat three bites at dinner. Oh, don't be silly. I ate like a wolf. Now, look, Liz. I was your dinner partner, remember? I was the guy that kept talking to you and getting no answers. I saw how much you ate. Was I that obvious? <laughs> no. To tell the truth, I think everybody was so interested in looking at Laura Maxwell... You could have eaten out of the sugar bowl without causing any stir. Well, how come you're not with her little group of admirers in the front room? Oh, I'm smart that way. I pick my spots when there isn't too much competition around. Well, that sounds fairly smart. You couldn't even get a word with her now. George is doing such a masterly job of being protective. Say, what is this about old George? Oh, one night he had a silly dream. He was chasing Laura Maxwell over the tenth green. Well, I was fool enough to start ribbing about it the next day at the clubhouse. Oh, then that was just a dream you were talking about. Sure, but I never got to explain it because Bobby Blake pushed little Betty into the pool right then. And that business about the green bathing suit and the tattoo? That was all part of the dream. 
Oh, that's wonderful. Old Mossy back strutting around making like a tiger, and he's got you to thank for it. Very funny. <laughs> poor, poor Liz. You know, you always did talk too much. Oh, shut up. Mad enough as it is. Now we've got to take her home since we brought her. Now I'll have to chatter like a monkey to keep up the conversation. She never says anything. Hmm. All she does is sit and smile in her beautifully aloof way. Oh, here she comes with George. And just look at him being so beautifully aloof. But I'm afraid I'm hopeless, Mrs. Maxwell. George tells me all it takes is practice to be a good golfer, but I think for me it'll take a miracle. Uh, now that, that fourth hole, that defeats me. I've never yet gotten a drive across the creek. Uh, I, I wish I were as good a golfer as you are. Why, thank you. Uh, uh, wasn't that a lovely dinner? I thought Vivian's table looked like a picture out of How Beautiful. Oh, we're here already? Uh, George, uh, see Mrs. Maxwell to the front door, dear. Oh, it's been so nice talking to you, Mrs. Maxwell. Thank you, Mrs. Cougar. Oh, why, there's Aunt Ella. I thought she'd be in bed. La, 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 I've locked out. What I've done with the key, I can't think. Sometimes I put it under the mat, sometimes I put it in the mailbox. I never carry it. And it isn't in the mailbox or under the mat either now. And I've been waiting Aunt for Ella, hours. Ella, this is Mr. and Mrs. Cougar. Oh, how do you do? I've heard so much about you from Lala. Mr. Cougar, do you suppose it's safe to go in now? You know, I'm so relieved to have Lala running around with a nice young married couple. It's an awful responsibility trying to look after her for Melvin. Uh, that's her husband, you know. Not that Lala ever does a wrong thing. But men are just crazy about her, aren't they, honey? And Melvin's so jealous he doesn't want me to let her out of my sight. Lord, I'll never forget the day he came home from Chicago and found that little Mr. Bird teaching her to swim. Uh, teaching her to swim? Uh, tell us about it. Well, Melvin nearly wiped the floor with poor Mr. Bird. We had to call in the physician. My goodness. Uh, your uh, husband's in the Marines, isn't he, Mrs. Maxwell? Oh, that's right. Melvin's in the Marines. And you never saw anybody that looked more like him. He used to teach physical education, you know. Uh, he's uh, overseas, I believe? Yes, yes. He's in New Guinea now. New Guinea? Oh, oh, New Guinea. Oh, that, uh, that's fine. Well, Liz, how'd it go? Vivian, you are now looking at the next woman's champion golfer. I drove over that miserable crick on the fourth oh. hole. Oh, at last. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Of course, it took me six putts to get the thing in the cup, but <laughs> you'll never know what it did to my spirits getting over that crick. Why, uh, I was just looking at the clubhouse bulletin board. Did you see this notice? Hmm. Oh, the swimming meet. Mm hmm. No, I hadn't seen this, but I knew about the meet. George is supposed to be in charge of it. He is? Well, he must have done a pretty good job of teaching Laura Maxwell to swim. Look, she's entered the diving contest. He didn't teach her to swim. He didn't have anything to do with Laura Maxwell. It was all a dream. Liz. Well, it's. It... Gotten to the point where it's driving me crazy, and I... Well, I'm sorry I yelled at you, Vivian, but... Oh, and I was feeling so happy over that fourth hole. Liz, what's the matter with you? Oh, I'm out of my mind, that's what. I'm haunted by Laura Maxwell. My husband had a dream that's turned out to be a nightmare. Vivian, that day I told you and even Howie and Corey about George and Mrs. Maxwell. Remember Bobby pushed Betty into the pool just then? Yes, I remember it well. He's still having some trouble sitting down. Well, I was about to tell you I was ribbing, George, about a crazy dream he had the night before. What? Anybody want to play around with me? Vivian? Liz? I said it was a dream. George told me about it at breakfast, and I got some uncontrollable desire to kid him about it that afternoon. Hey, are you both deaf? Then that business about the tattoo. Just a silly dream. Look, it's oh. me, Eve. What on earth is so fascinating you can't even stop to say hello to a guy? Eve, we've been taken. Hmm? We've been doing our speculating all for nothing. It was a dream. What was a dream? About George and Mrs. Maxwell. Oh. All that stuff Liz told us was just something he dreamed. Is that so? Well, of course it's so. Oh, I feel like a fool inviting her for his dinner partner. But even I thought you were serious. You seem determined to be a good sport about it. So... Are you sure you're not being a good sport about it now, Liz? Eve, you cynical little cat. Can't you take Liz's oh, word? Oh, let it go, Vivian. I'm surprised that even you believe me. Wait, Liz. I'll pound some sense into this woman. No, I'm going into the locker room and take a shower. I don't know her personally, 
But I've seen her out here. They say she's a two. Used to be an acrobat or something. Yes, I heard that. She came here with Farnham and Bailey, and then when she got mixed up with George Cougar, she just stayed on. Isn't that a shame? A common circus performer. I wonder if he's poor little wife No. She must. I understand they go out together all the time. Liz, where are you going? Liz! <laughs> Honey, I, I wish you'd calm down and tell me what this is all about. I was just getting ready to play golf with Howie and Joe. It was bad enough being kid about our friends, but everybody in town's talking about it. Oh, George, you got to do something. Me? you got to stop this silly talk about you and Mrs. Maxwell. Oh, now, Liz, you aren't going to let anything like that get you down, are you? What do you care what people say? You know there's nothing to it. Oh, I don't know. I've, I've heard this story come back at me so many times, I'm beginning to believe it myself. Oh, now, honey, you're just getting yourself upset by a lot of old gossips that don't mean a thing to us. Now, nah, now, nah, we'll take you in the house and dry your eyes, and maybe I can back, get back in time to catch up with Joe and Howie. We've got a bet on, and I'm playing good golf today. Oh, George, you don't even care. It doesn't even bother you. Oh, well, what's there to be bothered about? Oh, wait a minute. I'll come around and let you out. Well... Who did this? What? What a cheap trick. If I ever catch the guy... To... It's going to take a razor blade to get the doggone thing off. George, what are you talking about? That sign on the back of our car. That sticker that says, tell it to the Marines. Now, come on, Liz. Sit with Eve and me. Our seats are right over there. You see, Eve's waiting for us. And she's behaving all right. You know her. She, well, she can't resist a little juicy scandal, even if there's nothing to it. But I gave her a good talking to the other day. Oh, I wish George weren't in charge of this darn swimming meet. I've gotten so self-conscious I hate to be seen in public without him. Well, you, you needn't worry this time. Every gossip in the place can see him right up there by the diving board, so nobody can wonder where he is. Ah, okay. Hey, I'm not very good company on. these days. You missed the kids' swimming meet. It was awfully cute. Getting duller, though, as the kids get older. Well... Move over and pass the programs down, Eve. I don't seem to have a two here. Now, here's one, Vivian. You can look mm -hmm. at mine, Liz. Thanks. Well, of all things, did you know this? Mm hmm? Have you seen what it says here about Mrs. Laura Maxwell? No. Former Aquacade star and holder of the California backstroke record. Let me see that. Hmm, and all the time I thought George was teaching her to swim. Eve, what did I tell you? <laughs> oh, Liz knows I'm only kidding. After all, she has a sense of humor. Was it by any chance you that put the tell it to the Marine sticker on our car so I could have a good laugh? Oh, no, darling. Now, don't blame me for everything. That was Corey. You know what a fiend he is about jokes. Mm, there's Mrs. Maxwell now. Doesn't she look stunning? Oh, that white robe. Don't tell me she's going to dive in that. Oh, no. George is going to gallantly... Uh, see? George, the cavalier, taking the fair lady's cloak. Liz, there's the green bathing suit. Oh, oh, she just turned around. No, oh, don't mind me, Liz. I believe you absolutely about the dream and all that. But I just have to see for myself. Look, there's the fish. She has a fish tattooed on her, her knee. <laughs> Honey, what are you doing huddled up in a car all by yourself? Oh, come on, let's go get a drink. I don't want one, thank you. Oh, come on, get out. That's right. I saw you get up and leave. I couldn't think why you were going at first, and then I thought I'd look here in the car. We'll go in and have a drink. Well, I'm sorry I didn't stay to see Mrs. Maxwell try to break her back stroke. How'd she come out? Oh, I didn't stay either. I left as soon as I saw you get up. You know, Liz, there's something funny about that tattoo. Yes, isn't there? Just suppose I'm getting psychic or something. She's got it higher than it was in my dream. But still... Hey, Liz! 
George, she did it. I didn't know she had one, honey. Honest, I didn't. She did it, she did it. Oh, what a baby. Just look at her. She broke her own backstroke record. Congratulations, Mrs. Maxwell. Come on, folks, I'll buy the drinks. Oh, Come on, we've got to celebrate. Hey, Bill. Yes, sir. Have you got any champagne? Yes, sir. Good boy. Now pour some up for the champion. She broke her own record. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Cougat and I'll have a drink on that, too. Yes, sir. Man, oh, man, we're made. Say, you two, what was the idea of leaving? Huh? You didn't get to see. Hey, what's the matter with Liz? Well, you weren't crying, are you beautiful? Holy Mike, the tattoo. Liz, I didn't mean for you to fall for it. I was cooking it up for George. Oh, you were? I sure it was too good a bet to pass up. I bribed Laura to wear a green suit and let me draw a fish on her leg with my fountain pen. But everybody in the place knows it's a gag by now. See? Go on, show him, honey. There, you see? And when she came out of the water, it was practically washed off. Now, if you'd stuck her on a little longer... Oh, Liz, I meant to let you in on it, but I got so excited watching the exhibition. What a stroke, what a stroke, baby. It's perfect, you know that? Or, or nearly. There's just one little thing. Is there? Yeah. I think I could owe you something that would really polish that backstroke till nobody could touch it. Will you show me, then? <laughs> Will I? Here you is, Mr. Kyra. Uh, Mr. Kyra, don't you want the champagne? Oh, I've got a sudden appointment, Bill. Give it to the Cougars. See you kids later. Well? Well, I guess I'll have my champagne now. Pleasant dreams. Oh, oh here, honey. Let me wipe your nose. You got tears all over. <laughs> yes, sir. What would you have, sir? Who's that, George? Huh? The Marine who just came in. Uh, nothing right now, bartender. I'm uh, looking for Mrs. Maxwell. You know if she's here? I'm her husband, Captain Maxwell. Uh, no, sir. I... Uh, why, uh, Mrs. Maxwell just went down to the pool, Captain, with uh, a Mr. Cartwright. Oh, she did? Well, thank you. Yes, he's teaching her to swim. Uh, may I show you the way? <laughs> You have heard Isabel Scott Rorick's story, Bad Dream, adapted for Author's Playhouse by Janelle Gibbs and directed by Mr. Norman Felton. Miss Kay Campbell was heard as Liz Cougat, Mr. Arthur Peterson as George Cougat. Others in the cast of Authors Playhouse tonight were Miss Eve Parnell, Mr. Wilms Herbert, Mr. George Caesar, Miss Mary Lou Neumeyer, Miss Geraldine Kay, and Miss Bess McCammon. The musical was conducted by Joseph Galicchio. Next week, same time, same station, Authors Playhouse will bring you H. Vernon Dixon's gripping story of heroism below the sea, two of a kind. <laughs> 